I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It, episode 49. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. We're going to talk today about different therapies that you can use for pain control. Now, we've talked about opioids in the past, and that's certainly one therapy is drugs. Uh, But we're going to talk more about manual therapies or things that you can actually physically do. Because so many times, the problem with people's health care is physical, not chemical. And what we try to do all the time is we try to treat it chemically. And I believe, this is my prediction, and I've been right so far in 34 years, my prediction is that physical medicine or physical health care is going to have this major upsurgence and will take over the way we treat a lot of health care problems. I'm going to give it about five years. I'd like to see it maybe 10 years. And the reason I say that is this, because 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. They control organs. So many times if an organ malfunctions, we're treating the organ, but it's not the organ, it's the wires going to the organ, right before I went on the air today. For example, one of the lights we use wasn't working. And we had to wiggle and jiggle the cord and we wrapped it around and then the light came on. So the problem was physical. We had a physical problem with the connection. That's what happens in your body. You can have a physical problem. You can have a pinched nerve going to your spleen, your kidneys, your, your toenails. And those organs aren't getting the messages from the brain properly, and so they can malfunction. So we're going to talk about therapies for pain, but a lot of these therapies are also going to affect the 90% of the nerves that don't feel pain. And of course, when you're in pain, what's your main goal? Well, get out of pain. Now, pain can be good. Remember this. You start having pain, it tells you something's wrong. One of the things we were taught years ago, and I, I still teach all my doctors when they come on board with us, when, I, when, I go, when they start training as interns with me and then they, I, they become associates, is if a patient says, I have absolutely no pain, I worry about that. We all have pain. And one thing I tell them is check their fingertips. Because many times if they have, in, if they have damaged nerves, they may not be feeling any pain, but they can burn themselves and not feel it. I mean, one of the things we check for is the cigarette burns or stove burns. You, you know, pick up a hot pot. doesn't hurt. And some people think that's a novelty. Hey, I could stick my hand in hot water. Ha, ha, ha. Look how cool I am. No, that's a sign of a neurological issue. So pain is a good sign. It tells you something's wrong and you touch a hot stove, you pull away. That's a good thing. If you didn't, you'd have problems. So pain tells you that there's damage. There might be a ligament damage. might be a ruptured disc. might be a fractured vertebrae. But 90% of the time, there is no pain. We can't ignore that either. Now, chronic pain, there's acute pain, which means, hey, I, I hit my finger with a hammer. It hurts. That's acute pain. The pain, we know what the cause, many times we know what the cause is, but it, it, it's, it's affecting every aspect of your life is acute pain. Chronic pain is defined as pain that occurs continually or intermittently for at least six months. And that pain can signal a problem that you have to then address. And I've been in practice 34 years now. I'm a chiropractor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. This show, this radio show is the number one health and wellness radio show in the country, probably the world. And so I've been in practice a long time. And patients come to us on a regular basis and say, Dr. Joe, or my doctors that they see, I'm in pain. Fix me. So then we become investigators. We become Columbo. We're going to dig a little deeper here, try to find out where the problem is here. So we dig around and we try to find out what the cause of the pain is. And in most cases, major majority, it's a pinched nerve. Could be a bone pinching a nerve. Could be inflammation putting pressure on a nerve. It could be a muscle spasm around a nerve. But it's always nerve. I always have to laugh when people say, I have nerve pain. Well, of course you have nerve pain. Nerves control your pain. But I, I, I understand the difference. So... If you have chronic pain, what can happen is you can go into what we call the pain cycle. You start to have pain and it's over a prolonged period of time and you lose your physical abilities. You don't go out and work out. You don't do yard work. You don't do housework. And so now what happens is your muscles become weaker. Muscles support the bones. They lock the bones in place or out of place. And so that's one of the reasons I'll go back to my thought in a second. But when I deal with athletes, we deal a lot of professional and amateur athletes. We talk about if you're working out, you're building up strong muscles around crooked bones if you have a problem. 
we want you building up strong muscles around straight bones. Every single athlete, athlete I've ever worked on, 34 years, I've worked with the U.S. Olympic team, the Cuban Olympic team. I've worked with eight Wimbledon champions, a lot of professionals, amateurs. They all get it when I say that. I want you building up strong muscles around straight bones, not strong muscles around crooked bones. And so as a chiropractor, my team of doctors, we re run a real line. We can realign any one of the 206 bones in the body so that when they're working out, they're getting the full benefit. So that's important, uh, not for athletes, but for everyone that things are lined up. So you have pain, you sit around for a lot, your muscles get weak, and you're just not doing what you should be doing. So now you have the inability to perform activities, home or work, whatever it is, you get frustrated. You start perceiving yourself as unproductive. Now we start having an emotional co co component. During the times when the pain starts to go away, what do you do? I'm going to make up for lost time. I'm going to go clean the house. I'm going to go do the garden. I'm going to do whatever it is. I'm going to move those boxes. Pain comes back. And then due to over overexertion, uh, you start to, you go back into that cycle again and you sit around and the muscles get weak. So if you have that, think about this. Do you avoid doing things because of fear of pain? If you do, you might want to start digging a little deeper and saying, what's causing my pain? Is it a pinched nerve? Is it a muscle spasm? Is it toxic? I can't drink caffeine. If I have any type of caffeine, chocolate, coffee, soda, I get a headache. So I know that if I'm going to do caffeine, which of course I don't do anymore, I get a headache. And it took me years. And I remember being a little kid. I remember running around my cousins, Johnny, Paulie, and Mikey in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. And sometimes like they'd, they'd answer whoever would have a treat and they'd give us chocolate. And I remember eating the milk chocolate, which I never liked anyway. And I'd always get a headache and I, I always associated chocolate with a headache. It wasn't the chocolate that was the problem, it was the caffeine. Because later on in life, if I ever had some coffee, get a headache. So your pain can be physical, could also be chemical. So you need to start thinking in my therapies, well, gosh, I'm going to the chiropractor, I'm going to see Dr. Joe and his team, and they're awesome, I feel great, but these pains keep coming back. So what I do with those patients is I have them sit down and write down everything they start eating. And you can do this. Go to my website, drjoe.com, and under patient forms, you'll see something called a diet diary. And I want you to get the diet diary. Everybody can do this. It's amazing what you're going to learn from this. Print it up. It's free. You don't have to show it to me. It's all yours. And start writing down everything you eat. Everything. Don't lie. Don't cheat. If you chew a piece of gum, could have aspartame in it. Aspartame, number one side effect is what? Headaches. Some people have asthma and breathing problems when they do artificial sweeteners. So write down everything you eat. Everything. And then start noticing what patterns come up. You can put your symptoms in, in, in the margin there. And you can say, well, gosh, you know, Dr. Joe, you're right. I didn't realize that, that after lunch, I'm tired all the time. Okay, what'd you have for lunch? Well, I had pizza. Well, pizza's gluten, which is hard to digest, puts inflammation into the bowels. And it's, um, it has cheese. Saturated fats clumps your red blood cells together. So that can be a problem too. So you got to start thinking about that. What you're eating can be influencing your pain levels. So start to consider that because the pain levels could be associated with something chemical. And that's why the diet diary is such a great thing. You can write down what you eat, mark your symptoms, and problem solved. So you get into this pain cycle, let's try to figure out what's making it worse. And the other day I was at a, a, a Mexican restaurant, a bunch of friends of mine, and I saw this older person come in uh, with their family, they were in a wheelchair, and they come in a wheelchair and I looked at their hands and they had horrible rheumatoid arthritis. They were all crippled up. And I thought, wow, that must be extremely painful. And then I saw what they were eating. They had beef burritos, <coughs> excuse me, they had beef burritos with uh, wheat wraps and they had cheese and they had uh, chips, fried chips and a soda. And I thought this poor person is in so much pain to begin with because of rheumatoid arthritis. And then what they're having for dinner is gonna make their day, probably next couple of days, miserable. And I'm sure they do this every day. And so when I talk about pain treatment, options. One of the options is you have control of what you're putting in your body. And that's why the diet diary it's on my website is so great to use and just print it up, print up as many as you want. I don't care. And start writing it down. And you'll be fascinated when you start to see the patterns. Well, gosh, Dr. Joe, you're right. Every time I have a margarita, I get whatever um, stomach pains. All right, well, don't have margaritas anymore. Or fix your body so that, well, you shouldn't have margaritas anyway. So I shouldn't say that. I'm not going to say that. So some people the, the problem is purely physical, sometimes it's chemical, and then sometimes it's emotional. Another therapy, we can talk about this if we have time today, um, is the emotional component of pain. Every time, uh, and this happens many times in relationships, 
if I'm in pain, I don't have to deal with my husband, my wife, my kids, my job. And so as long as I'm always in pain, I'll have a, I, I can avoid these things. And it's avoidance tactic. And so you may have to think about that. I don't want to have a, a, a relationship with my spouse. So I know that if my back hurts, they'll stay away from me. Hmm. Now my back hurts. So you can control pain. And it's, it's called guided imagery. We're going to talk about that. Meditation, things that you can do, breathing techniques to help control the pain mentally. You can also cause the pain mentally as well. So you can do ice packs, hot packs. We're going to talk about that, biofeedback. So we've got a lot to talk about here today. So just tuning in, folks, I am Dr. Joe Esposito, and we're talking today about pain management and pain techniques, I should say, that you can use if you're a pain patient. <laughs> Not that you are pain, you're a pain in the neck, you have pain, I should say. And also, when you're looking at therapies, ask your friends. I know this show goes all over the world. So patients, uh, potential patients, send me emails all the time and say, who do you know in San Antonio, Germany, Japan, Guam, that does the type of work that you do in your offices in the Atlanta area? And my answer is always, I don't know. And many times, patients will come see us then from all over the world. They'll come stay, you know, not stay with us, but they'll stay in the area and get treated with us, which is great. But ask your friends, who do you know that if they have a problem, who did they go to? What therapies have they had? I always laugh. Doctors come to me all the time and they say, you know, Dr. Joe, you guys are very successful practices. And, you know, what do you do when people call you up and they want to advertise with you? I want, well, want an Addy, if you know what advertising is. I want an Addy, which is like an Emmy or an Oscar in the advertising world. And I say, I always tell whoever wants to sell me something, I'll say, give me a list of five doctors in my area who have used your services before, and I can call them for references. One time in 34 years did someone ever send me references. And I checked on them, and they weren't happy anyway, so they shouldn't have sent me the references. But that kind of quiets them down right away. So ask people what they're doing and let them make the mistakes so that you don't have to make those mistakes when it comes to your healthcare. Find out who they know who's good. So let's go through a bunch of techniques that we might that might be available to you treatment-wise, and, th- and then you can make some uh, uh, um, educated decisions. Because patients come to me all the time, Dr. Joe, what do you think of blank? And they'll ask me about supplements, they'll ask me about food, they'll ask me about uh, drugs, they'll ask me about physical techniques and uh, acupuncture, for example. What do you think of acupuncture? I think acupuncture is great. Because what acupuncture does, real thin needles are used, and I've had acupuncture done several times in the past, and it's a thin needle and they put it into the body. And what it's designed to do is to get the, the, the chi, it's called, the CHI, the chi, the flow of energy flowing through the body. And I get it. I understand the whole concept of energy flow. And uh, acupuncture is pretty cool. And I've had it done. It's virtually painless. They put a little needle in there. It's just a little tiny boop, and it's done. It's like less than a sewing needle. I mean, way less than a sewing needle because the needle is so thin. It gets right in there. And it depends where they do it too. If you do it around your eyes, for example, you're, you have a lot of uh, nerve endings in your face. So it's gonna be a little more tender. If you do it in your back, you don't have as many nerve endings. I remember being in school and we were testing where, where concentration of nerve endings were. And so we, you know, we touch, tell me two pins, tell me how far apart they are. And we touch the face, we touch the arm. And we did it to the back, you could, really hard to tell because your back doesn't have as many nerve endings in it on the skin. Now, spine, of course, does. So depending where you have the acupuncture done, here's my thing with acupuncture. Love it. Think it's great. Should be part of a a protocol. But if the bones in the spine are out of alignment or any bones are out of alignment, they're pinching nerves. And you can put acupuncture needles everywhere in the body and get that chi flowing really well. But if you have a blocked nerve physically because of a bone out of place, you need to put the bone back in place. So I find that acupuncture works very well in conjunction with chiropractic care in conjunction with a good diet because you can have the best chiropractic care in the world or the best acupuncture in the world or the best physical therapy in the world, the best surgery in the world. But if you're putting toxic chemicals into your body, your body's not going to heal properly. Had a patient come in the other day and uh, he said, Dr. Joe, uh, I was told by a surgeon that I need surgery. I have bulging discs in my spine and spinal stenosis and I need surgery. And that was it. I said, did they recommend chiropractic? No, they didn't. So I looked at the MRI, took some x-rays, looked at that. I put it all together for the fella. And I said, listen, I've seen cases way worse than yours. So here's my proposal to you. Let's see if we can get your diet straightened out. And his wife was in the room. She goes, oh, his diet is horrible. And let's see if we get your diet straightened out. Let's see if we can get some chiropractic care going, balance out the muscles. If it works, maybe we can avoid the surgery. If it doesn't work, maybe you are a surgical case. At least you're getting as healthy as you can going into the surgery so that when you have the surgery, 
you heal faster, and you come out of the surgery with less problems. And his wife liked that idea. And then I looked at the x-rays, and I saw he had calcification of the abdominal aorta and what's called the common iliac arteries. And you can see that on the x-rays. It's hardening of the arteries. And so my doctors went over the x-rays with him and said, listen, you need to change your diet because you're on such an inflammatory diet that you're actually getting hardening of the arteries. And if you have it in your pelvis, you also have it in your brain and your heart. Oh, yeah, I already had a surgery on my mitral valve. It's a valve in your heart. And I said, okay, so what do you think we should do? You think we should try to get you healthy from a physical standpoint and a chemical standpoint? And his wife, her tail was wagging. She was all excited. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Good. She got it. He wasn't getting it. So finally, it took some convincing. I think he finally got it. And it's a shame because he could have jumped into the surgery. I'm not saying he doesn't need surgery. Please understand that. If you need surgery, absolutely get it. But a lot of times, surgeons will send the cases to us and say, you guys try to fix them the best you can. If you can't fix them, we can always do the surgery later on. And that's the approach I like to take. He said, how do you know if I'm a surgical case? I said, well, based on what I see from the x-rays and the MRI, I would consider chiropractic care first. If you had, if you were screaming in pain, dropping to your knees, you lost bowel control, you lost bladder control. Now we might start saying this is an emergency surgical case and we need to get you out of emergency. But if we don't have those symptoms yet, let's try to do it conservatively. And if it doesn't work, we can always go to a more aggressive approach. And that's what I like to think about. That's why we're talking today about techniques that you can do aside from the more drastic things that might help with pain. And we're kind of going through a bunch of different options, including chiropractic, of course, which I think should be the first. Now, if you do want to make an appointment to come see us, if you have pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, you've ever been in a car accident, sports injuries, my team of doctors, we would love to be your doctor. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoe.com. And we can set you up a time as soon as possible. You can do it online or call us. In fact, if you do it online, we usually call you anyway, just to make sure it's right. And we accept most insurances. We accept car accidents. If you've ever been in a car accident, please go to a doctor who deals with car accidents on a regular basis like we do. So they know how to set up the paperwork, how to treat you, how to deal with the insurance companies. So it's a lot more than just your health when it comes to car accidents. Of course, our concern is your health. So if you've ever been in a car accident, car was damaged, you were damaged. You need to come see us. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Again, we want to get you well and keep you well. So any questions, give us a call. We'll answer those questions. We'll get it set up for you. So today we're talking about options for pain treatment, acupuncture being one of them. Uh, biofeedback. Biofeedback is kind of cool. We talked about how your brain could actually cause pain. Well, this is how your brain can actually help control pain. So what biofeedback is, a bunch of different relaxation techniques, guided imagery, meditation, and they use instruments to help get a, the individual's response. So we know that there are certain techniques you can do, breathing techniques, focusing on relaxation to help bring down your blood pressure. You can also do that to bring down your pain. And then in biofeedback, they, biofeedback technicians will go through certain steps and say, okay, that helped. We monitor your blood pressure. We monitor your pain level. That helped. Let's go back and do that again. So biofeedback is another option as well. And this, many times this is something we may consider with someone who has a chronic pain patient who has maybe had the surgery, had a severe accident, where they're not gonna be 100% anymore. Sometimes that happens. And even with surgery, again, not against surgery, but even with surgery, the surgery may be a total success. But after the surgery, scar tissue can form. And the scar tissue can literally wrap around the nerves. And that can be more painful than you were before the surgery. And unfortunately, there's lot, not a lot of techniques we have that can work to help with the scar tissue around the nerves. But in our offices, all our tables, what we call flexion distraction tables, you lay on the table face down and the bottom kind of stretches out. It drops down and back and it pulls apart the vertebrae. And in fact, just before I went on the air, I was talking to one of my friends here who was a patient. He's one of the hosts here at the station. And uh, he said, uh, I, I was running late the other day uh, between patients and he was on the, the, he calls it the stretchy table for like 20 minutes. He goes, that felt so good. He says, all my life, I've always been trying to stretch my back and loosen it up. He says, you left me there, which was great. He says, I fell asleep. And when I got up, it really felt good. So traction many times, gentle traction can open up the vertebrae and help uh, release pressure off the nerves. The other thing I like about these tables that we use is that you have something called a sacro-occipital pump. And I wrote about this in my most recent book, uh, Pres Prescription for Extreme Health. And a sacro-occipital pump is when you, 
you, you know your heart beats, it pumps blood. You have something called lymphatic system, which flushes out waste products and use that when you use your muscles. When you contract muscles, it works the lymphatic system. But there's something that pumps cerebrospinal fluid. And for many years, centuries, no one kind of knew what that was. And finally, I guess it was the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, Dr. Still is an osteopath, father of osteopathy. <clears throat> Excuse me. He came up with um, the concept of sacrooccipital fluid pumping with your sacrum and your occiput. Your sacrum is kind of below your belt and your occiput is the back of your skull. And every time you breathe, your sacrum and occiput move and they pump cerebrospinal fluid, which nourishes the brain and the spinal cord, flushes out waste products. And the tables we use when we put you on these tables pump cerebrospinal fluid. So they facilitate that pumping mechanism, getting nutrients up into the brain. And patients, when they come off the table, many times say, doc, I just feel great. I feel like almost like a little, little high. Well, that's great. That's the sacrooccipital pump being facilitated. So we talked about biofeedback as a technique, but the sacrooccipital pumping is also another technique, and it's a form of chiropractic, really a form of osteopathy. If you don't know the difference, osteopaths would do general manipulations. They'd kind of mobilize everything and hope that it would work. Chiropractic, we're more specific. We, ver we focus on specifically which vertebrae, which bone is out of place, and we put it back in place. Osteopathy, unfortunately, has lost a lot of that training uh, they've gone more to the medical route, which is fine. Chiropractic has maintained uh, the, the physical aspects of it, and which is kind of cool. So that's, if you don't know what an osteopath is, that's kind of what it is. A lot of people don't know that. Breathing exercises. This is really important because you need oxygen to get into the body to help the body heal. Most of us breathe wrong. We take very shallow breaths and we breathe without chest. Chest goes up and down, up and down. What I want you to do when you breathe, and you can do, if you can do this for two minutes a day, Focus on your belly expanding, like your belly sticking out. <sighs> Taking a breath in, let your stomach expand, your belly expand. And then at, once that's the full expansion, then your chest can expand as well. And if you do that kind of breathing, that's very helpful. And in fact, if you ever see a statue of a Buddha, you always say they got the big belly, the be Buddha belly. Well, Buddha was, in, according to stories, was not fat. He controlled his breathing so well that the belly actually expanded. And so it was a breathing technique that was used. And so you can do this Buddha breathing or this yoga breathing and fill up your belly first. And that's gonna help oxygenate your body. One of the things that happens as we get older, and I wish everybody would understand this, and hopefully you will now that you're listening to it, is levels of nitric oxide in our body start to drop. Nitric oxide opens up the blood vessels and allows for circulation. And when you're young and you have, you're an athlete, you, you get this great circulation. And as you get older, your nitric oxide levels drop. And so you can increase your nitric oxide levels by taking in nitrates. Now nitrates you might find in things like fennel seeds, beet powder. You see commercials now for beet powder, um, green leafy vegetables, very high in nitrates. And those are good nitrates. And we also have a product called Dr. Joe's Nitric Oxide, which we make from citrulline, which comes from watermelon, actually. But the citrulline converts into arginine, arginine converts into nitric oxide, and I tell you what, you want to be hopped up and feeling great, man, the nitric oxide is just amazing. In fact, I just got an email right before I went on the air uh, from a patient, a message through the website, and she said her libido is just done. And she goes, I don't know what to do about it. Would the nitric oxide help? And the answer is yes, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide should help. We also want to get the adrenal glands working. I, I told her to take Dr. Joe's adrenal support to help the adren uh, uh, hormone production. And then we got to check the nerves in the low back because the nerves in the low back control the colon, reproductive organs, and bladder. So when people have libido issues, those are the three things we check. Circulation, make sure the adrenals are pumping out the hormones, and then we check the nerves in the low back as well. So people think, well, I have low back pain, it's just pain. No, if you have pain, you're pinching a nerve to an organ. Now you can still pinch a nerve to an organ and not have pain. That's the kicker there. So that's why in our office, we check the nerves that feel pain and we check the nerves that don't feel pain. Now I'm gonna have to go to a break pretty soon, but when I come back, I'm gonna talk more about the breathing exercises, how that can help maintain pain through oxygenation, but what causes the problem with breathing? Many times, if, you, if your stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm, you, you may have symptoms like acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, eosinophilic esophagitis. I had a couple of patients come in last week with that. Irritation of the esophagus. Many times the stomach is up against the diaphragm. We need to adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. I'm going to cover that when we come back. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to be your doctors. So go to my website, drjoe.com. We'll get you set up as soon as possible. 
Uh, we te- accept most insurances. Many times it's out-of-network insurances uh, coverage. So please, just because you don't see our name on your insurance list, call us and let us explain to you how we work with people with your insurance. We have plans for everything out there, I think. So neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, acid reflux, heartburn, come see us. Nutritional advice. We also do a nutritional workup on our patients, which we're going to talk about coming up. But if you want to get the supplements, the nitric oxide, the, uh, the super greens an essential source, by the way, the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day. So if you're not willing to do anything else, please do the super greens, the essential source, the nitric oxide, the adrenal support, my books, uh, tons of hundreds of hours of podcasts are on the website, drjoe.com um, and go to the website. And if you have questions, you can always send them to me through the website as well. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on a WSB Radio app.